everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a Q&A as I've been posting a lot of vlogs recently and it kind of occurred to me that you might not necessarily know that much about me. So I thought the best way for me to explain a little bit about who I am and what I do is through a Q&A. So I have a few questions here on my laptop and I'm going to be answering them for you today. If you have any others and you want to get to know me a little bit more, just leave me a comment and I'll be sure to answer them down below. Okay, so question number one is, when did you move to Dubai and why did you decide to do it? So I moved to Dubai in June 2016, so almost eight years ago. I was 23 at the time, finished uni about two years before, and I had been working in a job near my hometown of Brighton. I came to Dubai off the back of some advice that somebody gave me at a New Year's Eve party. So one of my mum's friends used to live in Dubai and she'd already moved back but she was telling me how great it was and how lovely people are here and how much opportunity there is and she obviously saw my situation that I wasn't really happy where I was living or the job that I had. So we were just talking about my life at the time as a 22 year old and she was telling me about her experience in Dubai. She could tell that it would be a great opportunity for me so by that time I literally got it in my head that that's what I wanted to do. And if I get something stuck in my head, I really have to go through with it. So I became obsessed with looking at how to get a job in Dubai and what jobs were available here. And honestly, it was quite disheartening at the time. Like I couldn't really find much information about people that had just applied for jobs. And at that time as well, there just wasn't much information online. So I kind of figured that the best thing for me to do was to come here and try and get interviews. So I spoke to my mum and I said, I'm going to go for two weeks. And she was like, okay, where are you going to stay? And I was like, you know, a young, kind of naive person. I was like, I'll just get a hostel or something like that. But luckily she knew somebody that lived here and he very kindly let me stay on his sofa for two weeks while I was doing my interviews. So when the time came to come and visit, I assumed that I would already have like loads of interviews lined up, ready for me to start going to when I got here. And actually when I arrived, I had absolutely nothing. When you're here, you're gonna make the connections and people are gonna help you once they know that you've actually made the effort to come. So the first week I was frantically calling around every kind of company that I wanted to work for or friend of a friend that might be able to help me and honestly people were so helpful. I actually still to this day I'm so grateful for the people that helped me that didn't even know who I was or had no reason to actually help me. But by the end of the first week that I was there honestly I kind of lost hope. I hadn't really got any kind of success in my interview process at that time or the people that I had met with maybe I didn't necessarily want to work in their company and by that point I was already like back to my ways of looking for a job in London and I was like okay at least the second week I can just enjoy it as a holiday like it didn't work whatever. So by the Monday of the second week I had started to get some callbacks and some interviews that I was really excited about and I ended up not being able to relax or have that week as a holiday at all because I was just going back and forth to like first interviews, second interviews and there was a couple of companies that I had really been excited about trying. So on my final day in Dubai I had a second interview for an agency that I really wanted to work at and then I flew home and they gave me a task to do over the weekend while I was back. And by the Thursday I had basically been offered the job which was just crazy. I mean, just after two weeks to already have found a job, even now is quite difficult to imagine. So at the time I just couldn't believe it. Um, and I ended up having to call my mom and say, by the way, I'm moving to Dubai, I've got one month, which was a little bit terrifying, but honestly, one of the best decisions that I've made. When I think back to that girl now and what she must have been going through, like, I remember at the time, everybody saying to me like, oh my God, you're so brave, how could you do this? Like. I didn't know a single person here and I just couldn't really understand where people were coming from. I didn't think it was that big of a deal because I just knew that if it didn't work out, I could go home. So I didn't really have any fear coming into it, thinking, you know, what if it doesn't work out? What if I fail? I just kind of felt like, let me give it a go, see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, then I can go home. So question number two is what is a common misconception about living in Dubai? I think for me the obvious one is that we don't just all drive Lamborghinis and hang out at beach clubs every day like we do a lot of work and we have a very normal kind of expat lifestyle like when you look under the surface of the kind of Instagram models and the glitz and glam of hanging out at hotel pools all day there's actually just a very normal day-to-day -day life that happens here the same as it would in the UK or anywhere else that you live it's just that we have a better quality of life, in my opinion. The weather is better, 
you know, there is so much more to do. You have much more options when it comes to what you're going to spend your time doing because you could just go to a pool for the day. You could have like a vacation in a day on the weekend. You know, you can spend your time outside a lot more. You can get into sport and fitness. And there's plenty of restaurants and cafes that you can visit. There's just so much that you can do and how you want to spend your time that I think that really improves the quality of life. But it's no different than anywhere else that you would really live. You hang out with your friends. You know, you can walk your dog if you have one. You can, you know, go to the beach, go to the cinema, go to the mall. Whatever you want to do, it's there for you. And that's the difference. Anybody that says that Dubai is just fake and flashy and doesn't have any culture to it obviously hasn't spent much time here. You only have to spend a little bit of time with somebody who actually lives here and will take you around the spots that they like to hang out to realize that actually there is so much to see and do and that people are just living their normal everyday lives. Yes, of course, if you want to flash your cash, if you want to spend lots of money, there's also options for that too. If you want to live on a budget and only eat at, you know, really cheap restaurants or only shop at really like, affordable supermarkets, you can do that as well. What I'm saying is that there are options for everything. That's the difference is that, okay, I'm not tired to just living one way of life. I have options so it's like okay if I just want to stay at home for the next month that's what I'm going to do that's the difference I really hope that you guys cannot hear the annoying drilling going outside because this is my life my neighbors are getting a pool put in and for some reason that takes six months of a lot of noise but anyway hopefully you can't hear that okay next question what is my ultimate comfort food this is so hard for me. Like I eat out a lot. Uh, it was part of my job and kind of still is part of my job um, to try lots of different restaurants. So it's very, very difficult for me, but it's, it depends. If we're going to talk about restaurants, I actually think Greek food is really underrated and so delicious. One of my favorite spots to go in Dubai is at Souk Madinat, which people tend to think of as a very touristy place, and it is. It's something that you should definitely go to and see as a tourist. But I actually love to go there now, even after eight years of living here. And it's a place called Taverna Greek Kitchen. It's super authentic. Like, depending on whether you sit inside or outside, you're going to have a completely different experience. Inside, it's kind of decorated to be almost like a, ta well, a tavern, right, a taverna. It's kind of like a cave, like it feels like very low ceilings, very kind of sunken. The walls are sort of textured and doesn't seem exactly smooth, like as if they painted over rock. It has this gorgeous open kitchen, a nice bar. But my favorite place is to sit outside because it's right along the waterways of Madinat. If you've been to or if you've heard of Souk Madinat, you'll know what I mean. It's like this gorgeous like river running through the whole complex and you have these boats passing by but outside on the terrace is a really beautiful place to sit and you can just soak up the vibes like i love people watching in madinat because it's just so interesting you never know who's going to walk past so definitely recommend to verna greek kitchen if we're talking about at home i'm not a very big cook my boyfriend is the chef of the house which i'm super grateful for and he makes so many things that i like but for me i think pasta is always going to be my ultimate comfort food and we do so many different types of pasta but honestly it's so good we buy the fresh pasta from italy and then he'll make like a really nice sauce we get some proper like decent parmesan and we'll do some salmon or beef depends what it is sometimes we do a nice ragu on a bolognese like he'll make a big batch and then we use that like the whole week and it never gets boring so for me those are my two ultimate comfort foods the next question i have on this list is how do you find balancing full-time work alongside running a business if you don't already know, I do have a full-time job. I am a content writer, content manager, journalist, editor. In my previous job, I worked for a magazine, so that was really about writing what's happening in the city in terms of things to do, where to go, where to eat, etc. My job now is more focused on gastronomy in the city as a whole, just focused on Dubai. So it's my job to know about restaurants and where to eat and what to do in the city. And then my boyfriend and I also have our own business. So we have a luxury candle brand where we have scented candles in six different scents and we design the packaging for it, which is one of my favorite things to do. 
and under that we also have a magazine so same kind of thing I was talking about before writing about things to do in Dubai and the UAE and travel and everything beyond basically all the things that I'm interested in but I design it as a little 12 page magazine every single month and that comes under the room as well Plus, we also do corporate gifting for companies. So for brands, we create products for them to use as giveaways or to treat their clients, but we do them like really high end from scratch. We design everything and then produce it for them in a number of different ways. So balancing those two things together is quite challenging. I don't really have the perfect formula for it yet. I'm still kind of finding my way two years later. I think the one thing that's really important is obviously managing your time, but also giving yourself a kind of space to rest and be your best self. Because if you're not recovering in between these very busy periods, you're not gonna be able to produce good work. I know for me, like sleep is one of the most important things for me. And if I don't get enough rest, like if I'm not in bed at 10 p.m. every night, I just can't be my best self and I can't perform in the best way that I want to. So for me, I think rest is the number one thing. Um, in terms of managing my time, I do find it really difficult just because every week is very different. During certain periods, it might be a really busy season for gifting, so then the clients really need our attention and we're working on a lot of different proposals or we're managing deliveries from suppliers. There could be some really crazy weeks like that or there might be quieter weeks where it's like, okay, we're just gonna focus on producing really great quality content for the Instagram or for the magazine. So it really depends week to week, but my full-time job is pretty stable. I just go to the office twice a week, so the rest of the time I'm working from home, and then that really allows me to have the flexibility to balance both things and not get overwhelmed because I've been in the office nine to six and then I come home and I'm working, and so then it becomes really difficult. But I do utilize my weekends a lot. Weekends for me are always about work, and I don't mean that in a very like, toxic way I really enjoy it because that's my time to work on the magazine or it's my time to create content it's my time to be creative and that's what I mean when I say work not necessarily mean like admin stuff I wouldn't necessarily do that on the weekend but for me the weekend is a great time to really be creative and get a lot of that kind of content done all right next question what is the biggest lesson that I've learned as an entrepreneur obviously that's a really difficult question to answer I would have to say that for me, it's just about realizing that nobody is gonna do it for you. When shit goes wrong, you are the one that's gonna to have to deal with it. And I think that everybody kind of needs to have a little bit of that lesson in their life. I think that it's something that you should probably learn from a young age because you're always gonna be better off by knowing it. I think if you rely too much on other people to do things for you, which I have definitely been guilty of and probably sometimes still am guilty of, uh, you're not really going to be able to achieve great things so I think when you accept the responsibility and you realize that nobody's going to do it for you it's all on you then you can really just get past the stress of thinking what am I going to do about the situation and focus on fixing whatever problem you're in the next question is such a hard one what is the one piece of tech that I can't live without I mean I, ha I has to be my phone but I honestly can't live without a lot of tech. Like I am a big tech fan, especially Apple, sorry. I just love it. And especially I love that all of my things sync together. That's just probably the one thing that keeps me stuck in with the Apple cycle for so long because it just makes life easier when you can just airdrop things from your phone to your computer and then I get my messages on my watch and I have my AirPods connect automatically. Like all of that stuff just makes life so much easier. So I'm a very, very big tech person and obviously now I'm creating a lot more content. So then I have cameras, I have lights, I have so much tech that helps me do what I do and makes my life so much easier. So yeah, I'm gonna have to choose my phone for obvious reasons, but it's a tricky one. So the next question that I have is, what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone if they are just about to move to Dubai? First of all, if you've already decided that you really want to move to Dubai, then amazing. You've done the first step and that's obviously sometimes the scariest part. Moving away from your hometown can be very scary, but making the decision is just step number one. One thing that you have to keep in mind is just to take every day as it comes. Don't imagine that you're just going to land here and you're going to have your friendship group sorted out. You're going to be living in the most amazing place and you're going to have your dream job. These things take time. And that's part of the fun of the process. If everything was just easy and waiting for you laid out on a table first time you arrive, then where would be the fun in that? Dubai is somewhere that can really push you and challenge you. And of course that leads to growth. So 
just remember that sometimes failures and setbacks are going to happen, but the most important thing is that you power through and you take it in your stride and you learn from it because then that's going to make it the most amazing experience and one that will definitely be worth it. What are my top pros and cons for living in Dubai? I would say I'm going to start with the cons to begin with because that will probably be quicker. Um, Obviously, the number one thing is being away from friends and family, especially during like milestone times. You might be missing out on some really important things like weddings and birthdays or your friends having kids and things like that it can be really really difficult especially if you don't travel regularly and you can't make it back in time to see them for example I rarely get a chance to go back for Christmas and that's always really hard a few of my friends back home have had kids now and some of them I haven't even met some of them I've just met once so it can be really difficult to be far away from your friends and family during this time another con I'm gonna say A lot of people in this time would say the weather in summer, but to be honest, it really doesn't bother me. Like, yeah, of course it's hot, but I would much rather be in a very hot summer here than in a very cold winter back home, let me tell you that. Um, So I'm not going to even mention that, even though I have. And another con, let me think. I mean, the traffic can be quite bad, especially like in a very busy season like at the end of the year it can always get quite busy and sometimes the traffic can be quite bad during that time and sometimes like the processes of doing things can be a bit annoying like not necessarily as straightforward as you might expect but to be honest those are the main things like I can't really think of anything that catastrophic that would actually put me off living here for the pros number one I would say is the opportunity that you get when you move to Dubai like this is a city where things happen and if you have a dream and you want to make it a reality there's nothing stopping you all you have to do is work hard and keep your vision in mind and you can keep striving towards it and I believe it will happen for sure there are a lot of setbacks that stopped me from having the career that I wanted to when I was living in the UK. Number one, it's very, very competitive, especially in the field that I work in, which is kind of media journalism. I was much more focused on the traditional media like magazines. And especially I wanted at that time to work in the fashion industry. And fashion, as you might know, is super, super competitive. So yeah, I think if I had stayed in fashion and I was still living and I was living in Dubai, I probably would have found a way into it, but I decided to leave fashion to one side for a while and focus on lifestyle and the kind of gastronomy side of things, which I work in now. So yeah, I definitely think it would have been much more difficult for me to get the job that I do if I'd been living at home. Another pro for me has to be the weather. I kind of mentioned it as a con. It's definitely not a con for me. It's a massive pro. I love waking up every day and seeing a blue sky. That just puts me in a great mood. And on the rare occasion that we do have bad weather or grey skies in Dubai, it does affect my mood. So I know that it would be bad if it was like that all the time. I love as well that you can just go on a vacation for a day on a Sunday, go to a beach club and feel well rested like you've had a week long holiday. And also another big pro is just the people that you meet here. You have friends here that become like family. A lot of people don't have their family here. So you become really close to the people around you. And, you know, you have people from all walks of life. There's so much that I've learned from people that come from other countries. I think before I moved here, I didn't necessarily know many people from other countries. Everyone that I knew was British. So as soon as I came here, I started to meet people from loads of different backgrounds. And now the majority of my friends are from all over the world. So that's really exciting and something that you can definitely grow from as a person by learning from other people and building a network around you that become like family. The next question is, why did I start making content? So obviously this is a new YouTube channel and I've just started posting my videos. I actually started creating content for this YouTube channel last summer, but I haven't started posting it until now. Um, I think the reason for me doing it stemmed from the fact that I'd actually been making videos for quite a while, but always for other people. So I created a lot of content in my previous job um, where I was visiting lots of different places in Dubai. And I always get to do really cool things, whether it's going to events or new restaurants or, you know, hotel openings, that sort of thing, sometimes staycations, sometimes travel. I actually was already doing a lot of these things. And I think 
you know, I like to watch content about people doing stuff like that. So I thought if I'm already doing it, why don't I just make content around it? And I actually really enjoy it. I mean, I realized when I started my previous job's TikTok account and grew it from zero to a hundred thousand followers in less than three months, that actually maybe I have some sort of talent here and I kind of know what works and how to edit and keep people engaged and keep people excited and, you know, build content around things that people are really interested in. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm not necessarily doing that job anymore, but I could do it for myself. So that was kind of where the idea came from. I really enjoy the process of it. I've always loved photography and I realized that I'm actually really enjoying the editing process and videography. I'm still learning about all the different kind of techniques and equipment and things that I need to get, but it's a process and I'm on that process right now. I'm improving all the time and I'm really loving that journey. Okay, so those are all the questions that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you subscribe so that you don't miss the next video because they're going to be coming every single week and I will see you on the next one.